Welcome to Cape Agricultural Science Unit 2. I am going to be looking today at the mark scheme for the IA and of course what are the requirements by the CXC. Now in subsequent videos I'll be looking at the exact IA and what would be expected or examples to look at its coverage. I am using the new CXC Keep Agricultural Science syllabus, which of course is effective for the exam period starting May June 2023. So if you are doing Keep Agricultural Science, then this is the syllabus that you should be using sitting the exam for May June 2023 and beyond until there is a revised syllabus. We are looking particularly today at this type of broiler bird, a uh, broiler production with the Cornish cross bird. And we're going to be looking at what is required in the mark scheme. What is it that you should be looking at uh, to make sure that there is successful completion? of the internal assessment. Let's hop right into the mark scheme. I am looking at unit two. So what is covered here, it's for unit two and not unit one. I'm looking at an extract here from the CAPE syllabus for agricultural science. Requirements of a school-based assessment. And this bulk here signifies that this is new or pretty much would be in line with the updated syllabus. I'll be pointing out things here using my handy dandy marker. So, red right there, just let me just erase some of that. It's a little thick on the fly, so I might just do some correction as we go along. This here means that it is new. It is something that you need to look at. Let's look at what it says. Candidates will be required to rear, slaughter, and process a batch of broiler birds and produce a portfolio comprising a report on the rearing of the birds, reflection on the slaughtering activity, a market plan, and the report of an investigation carried out when rearing the birds. The portfolio must include photographs of all activities undertaken. So I need to highlight this. You must take a look at this. Photographs for all activities taken. Now, if you are doing poultry production, we are not expecting to see you in your uniform doing your photograph. That would suggest that you just, at, at a day when you walk past the farm, happen to take a photograph. We want to see you change and all ready for this activity. You might be wearing your lab coat. You might be wearing some farm clothing and properly geared or best geared for the farm and for the photograph. I'm sure your teacher will be providing the guide. For that. The portfolio will be marked out of a total of 120 marks as seen here. Marks for the portfolio will be allocated across the module in the ratio 1 to 1 to 1. The marks earned by the student are assigned to each module. For example, if a student earn 110 out of a 120 for a school-based assessment, 110 will be assigned to Module 1, 110 marks to Module 2, and 110 marks to Module 3, right? So it could add up to uh, 330 out of 360. Right here for assessing the portfolio, field practical activity from rearing to processing. Candidate will be required to rear a batch of broiler birds. 
And of course, there's a couple of top uh, could look at our suggestion that you could look at as to what you could do the research on. Now, the IA has four sections, section A, B, C, and D. We're going to look at them as we go through. Section A, report on rearing of broiler birds. But each of the following area listed below, I to four or one to four, award one mark for each describing what was done. One mark each for a suitable justification for each area. No mark is awarded for only stating the concept. Minus 50% from the candidates earn total marks. If photographs are not provided to show at least nine of the activities undertaken, at least nine, let us highlight that. You must have at least nine photographs. And we are going to look at the activities from one to four. So the first thing here, is the preparation of your broiler pen or the fall coop, as you might say, some persons might say fall coop, some person might say poultry. So on the preparation of a poultry pen, you are supposed to carry out sanitation practices. Now you need to say what you have done, and some person might say how it was done, but most importantly, you need to say why it was done and you should show photographs of you carrying out the sanitation process. Then there's also security. What does that mean? You're going to be looking at your fencing. You're going to be looking at the concrete framework. You're going to be looking at your roofing. You want to make sure that there is nowhere for rats or mongoose or any other thing to enter your poultry house that could pretty much harm your bird. Now, in security, there's a thin line between security and sanitation here. You want to make sure that your foot bath is also in place and you want to outline pretty much why that foot bath is there. Of course, by now you'd understand about biosecurity. So you want to make sure that persons are stepping in that foot bath before they enter the poultry house. Then you want to talk about structural maintenance. You might be partitioning in the cube. You might be uh, pretty much putting in some new wire, securing the, the, the frame that you have. You might be setting up your brood ring. All that must be captured. So if you have, of course, if you have actually stated what you have done, and provided the justification for doing it and providing the photo to show that this was actually done, then of course you'll be scoring full marks for this area, which is of course six marks. The other area, our number two, is going to be brooding. So you are going to be having the selection of litter. Now, this is a very interesting area because there's so much that can be selected as litter. The popular one here is going to be wood shaving or that which we call sawdust, but there's also rice oil, there's also bagias. I think rice oil and sawdust is going to be the popular one for a lot of persons. And of course, there are others I will touch when I look at the IA itself. Then you want to look at nutrition equipment. And this is, of course, going to be uh, down to the type of feeders that you're going to be using because you're going to be using more than one type of feeder and also the type of waterers that you're going to be using. Uh, these are nutrition equipment. And this could also extend to your storage tank if you're using a storage tank for your water. All that would pretty much include in your nutrition equipment. And then there is partitioning, and partitioning there would be a part of your structural maintenance, uh, overlapping there. When you partition for the brooding, uh, yeah, pretty much partitioning for your brooding area. And then the temperature maintenance here 
we are looking at putting in your light bulbs um, in your brooding ring or if you have a, a commercial brooder or if you set up or high odd that sort of stuff. We're looking at the curtains that you're using around the poultry house to ensure that the proper, proper, proper temperature is maintained within the poultry house. There are persons who will also have things like um, industrial thermometer in the houses that is pretty much monitoring the temperature of the house for the growth process. If you would have done all this and provided reasons for doing it, and photographs, then you'd earn for yourself eight beautiful marks. The next area is going to be the management practice. Uh, this is marked out of 10. Now, nutrition management, feeding. All right, uh, who are you feeding? Adak, Adlib, anything, anyhow, any amount? We want to look at that, all right? And then we get to watering. So you want to show, show the feeding. Remember, you're going to be using uh, two different types of feed. We popularly call them pellet and crumble. It's very important for you to look at the label on the feed to look at the feed makeup. There are three nutritional stuff there that you need to pay attention to make sure that you do that. Uh, the supplement that is used, you know, you're going to be using stress medication. You might be using antibiotic. Not to show what you are using wherever you are but that which is provided from your feed supplier, your chicken supplier. The supplements that you are using there uh, to augment the process to ensure that with your bird. And then again, the management practice, we have to also look at sanitation. What's sani what is expected of you? How often are you going to be washing these uh, waterers? Or are you going to be cleaning the feeder? Um, sanitation. Are we going to be turning the litter? Uh, are we going to be... How oh, often we're going to be looking at the foot bath? What are we using in the foot bath to make sure that um, biosecurity is taken uh, care of? So the whole management, what is expected of you? When are you going to be feeding the bird? Is it automatic feeder? Is it water? What is the routine? What is it that we should be expecting to see if we visit your farm one day to observe your management practice? And then we want to also look at the litter disposal. Are you just taking out the litter out of a poultry house and throw it at the side of a poultry house? Are you throwing it in the gully that probably passed your school farm? Now, we need to look at that. Or is it that you understand that we're practicing sustainable agriculture and you are going to be disposing this in your compost heap? All this we have to look at. Now, preparation for slaughter. That's two marks. That's four. What are your preparations um, leading up to slaughtering? Now, we should see that. What is it that you'll be doing? What is it that we should expect during the time of slaughtering? All right? So that is very, very important. And if you follow, you are going to be seeing me going through all these, providing you some detailed information on these steps. So that would take us nicely to ASAP plan. So the ASAP plan for slaughtering, the plan identifies the following for two name hazard during the process. Now we want to look also at a critical control point for the hazard during processing. A suitable strategy for monitoring for hazard identified. Corrective action relevant to the hazard identified. A critical control limit associated with the corrective action identified. And then lastly, we are going to be looking at the environmental conditions. And this includes a description of three environmental considerations during broiler process, processing post slaughter. What happens after we would have slaughtered the birds? So just one benefit for each consideration suggested. So it means that we have to be prepared. This is not just a walk over. It's not the same CXC lab. It's a little more in depth on your teachers. That way. Now, if you have done all this well, 
and you would have written this up properly in your report, then you'd be earning a total of 40 marks. I've just completed watching the expectation for section A of a CAPE IA. I would have outlined, as is in the CXC syllabus, the requirements. I'm going to be presenting in subsequent video on the examples of that which we can write for the IA. You really want to follow this playlist. Let us look a little bit here at broiler production with Cornish cross birds. Now, broiler production, what is broiler production? Simply put, broiler production is a rearing of chickens for meat. These birds are usually fast growing and are ready to be slaughtered in a short time, six weeks in most cases. Now, why should we practice broiler production? Broiler production, it produces meat very quickly and this helps to satisfy our protein needs. It helps to satisfy our food security needs. It is a source of income and of course, it provides job for many persons. Broilers are reared in a poultry house or coop. The construction size of these houses differ, and it is based on the cost of a facility or how much you can afford, uh, the needs of a person rearing the bird, number of birds to be reared, and of course, location or where you are. Now, each bird will require a square foot of floor space as it matures. However, Smaller space is required during the brooding process. The following are also required. Feeders, waterers, medication, feed, cool storage, slaughtering facility, and equipment are needed for the rearing of the bird. But these are just some of the things that would be needed for your broiler production. How do we select our broiler chicks? Now, baby chicks are hatched usually after 21 days. Chicks are only to be purchased from reputable sources. The chicks should be vaccinated against diseases such as Newcastle, infectious bronchitis, infectious Russell disease. Now that you have ordered your chicks, the following must be done before the arrival of your day old chicks. You should have prepared your poultry house. Your brooding ring should have been set up. And most importantly, remember when the bird gets to your farm, you should feed them or have them drink water at least two hours before feeding them and if you give them the feed that quickly or as they arrive that could affect the metabolic process sending up the body temperature very quickly and they might be already dehydrated so you might be killing the birds by feeding them until we next meet please be reminded to like share and subscribe I am Mr. Wilson from C Biology B, where we cover biology, human and social biology, CSEC agriculture, ape agriculture, and environment. Be good. Remember, study to show thyself.